Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science Watts Collection. Uh, what I want to talk about today is the a set of watches. These are five watches, five watch brands that I, are overlooked. They're, they're superior in, in a lot of different ways to the, what we'll call the, sort of the usual suspects. And the other thing about them is that they're identified with more with um, fashion and, and jewelry companies mainly, and fairly high level at that. And so people tend to think, well, you know, there must be something wrong with them, or they're not real high horology, or they're not really superior horology, and that's just not true. And so these, sometimes you can find some extremely good buys on these, but you've got to, you've got to know what you're looking for. So let's take a look at these. Now, the first company is Van Cleef and Arpels. And Van Cleef and Arpels has, I think it was back in 1949, a Pierre Arpels made a little watch for, for men and he wore it for a number of years. And then later on, uh, they decided to have a dual time watch and uh, they hired uh, Aganor Jean-Marc Viderac to do it. And they have this, this incredible watch. It's one of the few uh, totally from scratch uh, watch movements by Viderac. Uh, but these two right here that we're going to take a look at are ones they've done at one time or another. And they're really interesting. The first one, the one on the left, is called the, the Monsieur Alarm GMT. It has a caliber uh, Jezel Le Coutre 939 in it, and it has an Aganor uh, 3001. This is for the bio uh, retrogrades on this. And then on the back, uh, it some of them have these calendars that are like 100-year calendars or something like that. It's a very cool watch. And the price on these is around six, 7000 Depends. You know, you can find them perhaps cheaper than that. Some of them are more. Uh, now, the other one is, is the um, Montour World Time Watch with an alarm. And this is a very, this is for a world timer, Zaza Le Coutre, uh, caliber 918 movement in it. So you end up with these watches that have movements that are better than a lot of in-house movements, to tell you the truth, or ones that uh, Zaza Le Coutre was used by Patek Philippe and Vesser on Content 10 for years. So they're really excellent movements. So it's, not one of these things that if they don't have their in-house movement, they're no good. These are very good and something that they're overlooked. And because they're overlooked, that's sometimes you can find a great buy on them. Now, this next set is Hermes. And Hermes is started to win so many Grand Prix awards that even you know, the most, well, I don't want to have a fashion watch. Well, they're not fashion watches. Uh, first of all, Hermes has owns 25% of Vashur, which is a movement maker. And so they can get the different kinds of movement they have, but they also have a lot of their award-winning movements have uh, elements that were done by Aganor, by uh, Jean-Marc Viderec, which is, and of course in 2007, he won the watchmaker of the year. He's one of the best watchmakers in the world. So here again, we have what people, a lot of people think, oh, well, that's a fashion watch where in fact it's anything but. Uh, the uh, up at the top with the two moons, Northern and Southern Hemisphere that won an award for the, oh, uh, what was it? The, uh, for a moon phase watch, I guess. It was in uh, a 2019 Grand Prix. In 2015, it won for the uh, calendar watch. And this is a surprise me. In 2011, the Hermes Arc, Arcade uh, Le Tomb Suspendu won the men's award. This is a, this is a big deal. <laughs> it really is. Uh, the 2017 entry was a finalist in the Slim the Hermes Lure Empathy. These are all very unique watches. And 
sometimes you can find a really good buy on them if you know what you're looking for. I, I tried to get the uh, temp sus suspend due on a, tried to slip in a price at an auction, but it's one of the things about auctions. If you go to one of the major auction houses, the watch buyers, watch collectors are a lot more sophisticated than your guys who are getting the usual suspects. I'll put it that way. Now, this next one, now Chanel, uh, these are expensive watches. The MSRP is $41,000. Uh, I found a pre-owned one that looked pretty good for about twenty five. dollars That means they're, I mean, they're, you don't find really, you know, cheap deals on these ones, but these are extremely good watches. See, um, Monsieur de Chanel, uh, this was, they were designed pretty much by Romain Gauthier. And he worked with the movement team to develop the Caliber 1. But when you take a look at it, they look a lot like the kinds of calibers on his own watch. It was one of the top uh, watchmakers in the world. Here again, you have this, what's viewed as a, uh, uh, a fashion brand, and it's not. I mean, they have they're too good. They also own, I think, about 10 or 20 percent of uh, FP Jorn, which is another resource. Now, there's one other watch that they make called the J12, and they came out a couple years ago with a movement by uh, Kinesi, which they teamed up with Tudor to have make their own movements for them. Now, this is these things are relatively inexpensive, but they're beautiful looking movements on them, and it's something that you might want to consider if you're looking for a bargain basement. If you've got to get the right J12, uh, because there were different versions, earlier versions had ETA movements in them. But Chanel is something that if you can get your mitts on one of those and not go broke, they're really something. Now, the next one is Bulgari. Uh, these watches uh, have really, there's sort of two parts to them. There was a period uh, when... Daniel Roth and Gerald Genta work for uh, Bulgari, and I, I guess the, the watches they made were, were fantastic. Here's one example. Uh, this one is uh, it's called the Daniel Roth Grand Loon, and again, this is what Bulgari has. As you can see, the Bulgari uh, little uh, label on there. And it has a, a caliber Daniel Roth 206, 3 hertz movement. They have a set. The Papillon is another one they have in in by the Bulgari. They also have them sort of in, in Daniel Roth. The, uh, the little uh, three-armed uh, second hand over there at 9 o'clock, you have the three tracks. That looks a lot like the, in fact, it is the... Uh, Daniel Roth Alsis, how that he had used with that, but essentially it works as a second hand, but it's part of the uh, of the main gear train. Now, here's more recently, a couple things happened. Um, Bulgari started winning these awards. Just last year, 2021, they won the award for the uh, Eguido Or, which is the grand prize at the um, GPHG, the, the Grand Prix d'Orologie de Genève. Now, the point of that is huge. Uh, Audemars Piguet, it took him 20 years to win that award. And Rougarri came out with a Finicio, Finissimo, a real thin, beautiful uh, chronograph watch a couple of years ago, and they won on that one. But the one that I like is called the Octo Roma. And they have a an in-house caliber called the BVL 191, uh, and the list price on it is $6,800. Now you can find a lot better deals than that. Trust me, this is a wonderful watch, great-looking watch. They, here's a green one. They they also have them in blue and then a black dial. Just really fantastic uh, watch, and I think one that's very much overlooked, but if you want to get a really, you know, top drawer watch for not a great deal of money, this is something that you, the Bulgari is something you may really want to consider. Now, the final one is Harry Winston. Uh, I have a Harry Winston. In fact, I have the one on the left, the Premier by Retrograde. Now, there, there's sort of two, two versions, really. 
there's sort of the pre-swatch era of Harry Winston and the post-swatch era. During the pre-swatch era, they had everyone from um, uh, uh, Roger de Bouy, uh, Jean-Marc Viderec, F.P. Jorn, all kinds of people making movements for Harry Winston watches. And, you know, uh, this particular one is uh, the Premier by Retrograde. This is one I have. They, has a Gerard Perigo caliber uh, 3106.B1 uh, movement, but then it has the uh, by retrogrades module, uh, Agenor 2351 by Agenor, which is like, you know, tip top best watchmaker in the world. Uh, now the post watch is a little different. Uh, post watch, the post uh, group owns them and of course they wanted to put their own movements in it and they have one that they uh that was used in the uh in this particular watch in the Harry winston midnight uh, date moon phase automatic and the calibers uh hw2303 it's got a silicon balance spring uh swatch along with paddock philippe and rolex all went together and developed a uh, silicon hairspring. Patek Philippe now has it, I think, in all of their uh, watches. I don't particularly care for them, but that's me in sort of old-fashioned that way. But uh, still, it's a very good watch. Uh, the MSRP on this is 27300 but you know, I found a new one at Joma Shop for 18000 So it's not, that's, these are not watches. I think for necessarily for investment watches, but you can find some really excellent horology. Um, this a similar movement by I think uh, Jacques de Rose uh, has a similar movement to the Harry Winston twenty thirty two hundred three. Now, if uh, since Swatch owns both of the brands, then they can sort of swap around the uh, movement. The same thing happens with uh, the ones that are owned by um, Richemont now. So anyway, that's something that you have to know about. But again, these are overlooked and oftentimes you can find great buys on them. Uh, and because people will say, oh, well, they're, they're not what they, what they, they're not high horology in the sense that they have their own movements. Some of them have better movements than their own ones would ever be. Anyway. Let me know what you think of this, and uh, this is not an op not only an opportunity, but it's an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Till next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the Art and Science of Watch Collection.